that down We're all for your feet Take you home with me Put you in my house Up and down the floor When you're talking to me That baby talk I like it like that Oh Hey everybody, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Life is good. You allow, to, allow God to take care of it. He is the only thing that matters in our lives. As you see, I'm coming right out blasting this month about the grace, the goodness of the Lord. Yes, sir. I might change this and start preaching this morning. I feel like it. I got a tie on. Every time I put it on, all I need is a piece of chicken and I'll start preaching. Boy, I want the big piece of chicken too when I come to your house. I need a big piece of chicken. I don't want that little piece. Yes, sir. God bless you, man. I'm glad I, that you allow me in your home today. Hope we can have a lot of fun, learn some things, do what we have to do, do the usual. And I just hope that you're doing what you really want to do with your life. I hope everything is what you want it to be. And if it's not, I hope that you're working on it. Yes, sir. So before we get started, I'd just like to give homage to the almighty Heavenly Father. I thank you for allowing me to do this one more time. Gracious Heavenly Father, you allowed me to be here. If it was for you, I wouldn't be here doing any of these things. I give you all the praise and glory. God bless everybody that's here and that's listening. Touch their hearts. Touch their families. Touch everything about them, Lord. Let them know that you're real and you're in their lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to start trying to speak to nobody in Germany till later on. I tried to figure that out last time, and my producer, David, said that, uh, I said, Sacre Bleu, and the man said, that's French. You know, and then he looked it up to what it means, and I'm startled. Or some, some stuff he said. But we're going to speak, uh, let's see, uh, Sweden, the Swish, the Swish. What is it, Swiss? Swedish. Swedish. The only thing I know about that is Swedish meatballs. That's it. That's pretty good. <laughs> but other than that, uh, I want to get into something, though, that's uh, more of a serious matter. I know uh, most of you have seen the uh, video of the young little girl, 16-year-old in South Carolina, being uh, accosted by the police. And... You know, I, I looked at that, you know, because they showed it over and over. I looked at it, and first of all, when I first saw it, because it was, I first saw it early in the morning, one morning, and I couldn't believe, you know, that this was happening. I couldn't understand, well, well, what is this? And then when it all came out, you know, a lot of questions came upon me. First of all, whatever, what he did was just it's no, I have no words for it, you know, and and then I began to think, I mean, I mean, first of all, why, you know, police called for a, a, a girl that wouldn't give somebody her f cell phone. You had to call the police. You know, and uh, because the police is not social workers. They're there to do one thing and enforce the law. They don't, you know, some would have. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to vilify all the police. I know some 
some police officers, I don't think they would have done that. I think they have enough training and understanding of how to deal with kids, especially when a kid has not really done anything. She's not violent. She hasn't really done anything for you to, to get uh, uh, manly with her. But just to see that, you know, the tra traumatized, traumatization that the, she's going through, went through her family, because I know what I would feel. And I just looked and thought about that, how, uh, how much of this goes on. I mean, what if this wasn't, again, on, what if nobody had really taped it? See, that would have gone on and nothing would have happened. Now, I'm not going to uh, get into a lot of that, but if you want to talk about it, here's the phone number, 323-965-1600. Only thing that I look at, one of the things I thought about is that you mean there's nobody in that school could have talked to that child and gotten got her to cooperate or did something different. Nobody, social workers, nurses, principals, teachers, nobody. You had to call the police. You know, and we found out that now this is allegedly what it, what they said. She just lost her mother. She's in a foster home. She was transferred from another school. She was hit there. And she really was a quiet, the, one of the, the students was saying she, they really didn't know her that well. She was very quiet. She wasn't saying anything. So she came there with all this on her anyway. And it seems to me that the people, the school, all that should know all this and uh, act accordingly. Give her a break, will you? Why would you? But see, that's what we get. And then we want to vilify all the young people and say that they this and that and the other. And uh, just the food for thought. I mean, how we treat one another and how, why that has to stop. You know, that, that, that's a rallying point. All right. Anybody want to give a comment or whatever? The phone lines is always open, and I'm always uh, accessible to that line. Okay. Now, there's another uh, thing today that uh, I want to say. Uh, it's about Beyonce. I think y'all know Beyonce. Don't you know, don't you know Beyonce, Dave? I know Beyonce. Oh, see, everybody know Beyonce. Yes. Yes, uh but Beyonce did something that uh, that really touched me. She uh, uh, put up seven million dollars for a homeless project that is in her home of hometown of Houston. She built this facility, seven million dollar facility, just for that. Now you don't hear about much about that. We always hearing about all the negative things that people do, but this is something that allegedly she did with her own resources and wanted to help in her hometown. I say thank you, Beyonce, that you would do something like that, and hopefully others will pick up on that. And I'm not saying others are not doing it, because uh, there's other people that are doing things. And, but this one caught me, because that will really help people that's in her hometown, and along with helping herself. I just say thank you and give her a shout out for that. I want to give another shout out for people who are ill today, who are homebound with various illnesses, uh, hurt, got uh, diseases. Like I'm on dialysis and I know what it is to be on dialysis. It's, it's not an easy thing. Uh, people who are taking chemotherapy or going through uh, diabetes and whatever. I just want you to know to hang in there. We can make it. Set, a, set some kind of goal if you can for you to reach every day. That will make your day go quicker. Because yeah, the more you sit and don't do anything, the more that you can think about it and the illnesses will overtake you. You always have to try and control that as much as you can. But... I just feel as though I just want to acknowledge the people that's out there and, and, and I can understand it. I can know what you, I know what you're going through because when you're going through the things, a lot of times your family and your friends, they really don't understand what you're going through because you can't explain a lot of it because you don't know sometimes what's going to happen yourself. You can get up, you got a, another strange feeling, you don't know what it is and, you know, sometimes, you know, you get super tired. Like I've been tired the last few days, just tired. And you can't explain that. You know, there's no reason for it. You say, well, you ain't doing nothing, you know. <laughs> well, I know, but uh, that's part of what this disease does. It really, you know, it really tires you out. And, and I just, I'm just giving 
a shout out and a prayer for those of you who are shut in and going through things or know somebody. If you know somebody that is in that situation, go by and see them. Call them. Lift them up. Give, give them a hug. Bring them some soup or something. Talk to them. They need that. It's, it's very important that you go and see people because a lot of times people have these things. They don't, you know, you expect to see them dragging uh, like one foot on the ground and, 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 and you know, they all, you, that's what you expect to see. But see, everybody's not like that. Everybody is still ill, but they carry themselves in a way. And then when you see them, you figure, oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. Yes, it is. You just don't worry about all that. They, you thank God that they're able to do that. You just go and see them. Give them a hug. I mean, I'm telling you, it'll go a long way. Uh, everybody say amen. amen. No, I didn't hear it. Amen. I didn't hear it. Say again. Amen. Amen. Come on now. There you go. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. There you go, because that's what it's going to take. We're all in this together. In this thing we call the human race. We're all in it together. They don't, we try to separate ourselves from the haves and the haves now. They're trying to separate from the black and the white, from the from the fat, it is get, we try to separate, but it's no good because we got one blood. It ain't but one blood. And it ain't, I'm not talking about no gang. The blood that keeps your body going is the same blood that can put in anybody. Okay? It's all one blood. We need to understand that nobody's no better than nobody else. Now, we have a guest today. Uh, I uh, met this brother, uh, you know, I'm getting some, some insurance. Seen it on TV one night because I'm, I'm looking at TV. And I seen this commercial like, and it was saying some things. I said, no, nah, like, this is not true. It's not true, you know. It, it couldn't be. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that and, and see about this thing, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, on this show, when you do things like that, it's not a... No secret. He, he, he over here writing the name of the thing on my paper so I can say it. He wants some credit for it. He wants me to give a commercial for this. So he wrote it down. So I'm telling everybody what you did. So he did that. It's Lincoln Heritage because I didn't know what it was. But but it was a, a it was something that it caught me. And I need that because of, you know, I'm being responsible. Uh, somebody said something. What you say, engineer? Oh, OK. I know that. Now, if you're going to come in engineer, I know what I'm doing. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I, I'm trying to set this up. Let me set it up. Okay? This man, is uh, he's the nephew of uh, Clarence Carter. Y'all remember Strans, Clarence Carter? I'll tell you, the, the thing that you remember is when he's played saying stroking. Some of y'all know that. I mean, okay, you know what I'm saying? He did that. I remember that song. But this is... This is his nephew, and he's going to tell us about, this is going to be dedicated to the blues today. And he's going to tell us about when he was young and all the people that came to his house and a lot of these things. And we're going to do that right after we take a break for some cake. <laughs> a break for cake. What about that? All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Security warning. If you are seeing this pop-up, it means your computer might be infected. You may have malware slowing down your computer's performance. We highly recommend calling the toll-free number on your screen. Well, I see you every day. Well, I see you every day. In your neighborhood. Well, I see you every day. Well, I see you every day. You might be. I got my eyes on you. My back? You back? Baby. Well, then see, if you're going to do this, uh, 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 ma'am, you got to count me in so I know what to prepare myself to come back on the air. I just don't want to come back on the air just dry like that. You want to come back busting? Don't have to come back and give you some training before, and cut the show you, you off. You want to come back busting? Man, my, that's what the blues is about. Anyway. <laughs> We all keep talking. I'm glad, that you, I'm glad that you're here. We, we had some guests that came in, and I'm glad that they're here. A uh, young man just had surgery on his knee, and he's up and about. Mm-hmm. Brandon is here. Glad to see you, my brother. It's been, yes, it's been a while. I think I'm going to get a cut like that. What do you think? All right. Think, you think I look good with a cut like that? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. It'll be a new style. Get a new style. Oh, yeah. If I come in here like that, I don't know what, to, <laughs> I don't know what they would do. Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, hear from my guests right now. Uh, Mr. The brother's name is Ron Carter. I met him with Lincoln Heritage, like I told you, uh, when I was getting this insurance, and it was a dynamite insurance. I said, no, this couldn't be true. <laughs> but when he came and explained it to me, it was better than I thought when it, before I was thinking. But here he is. I'm glad he came. He's going to tell you a little bit about himself, about his uncle, his famous uncle, and whatever else he feels he wants to say. Glad to have you here, Brother Carter. Thanks, Leon. Okay, it's on you. Okay, just to let you know that, uh, yeah, I grew up uh, in Alabama, and uh, I grew up uh, in a place, you know, actually I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, which is the capital city. So uh, my grandmother uh, worked at the department store. She ran the elevator, the same department Mm. store that Rosie Parks was Mm. the seamstress for. It's called A. Knockman's Department Store on Dexter Avenue, which is about four or five blocks from Dexter Avenue at the church. So we all lived in uh, the same location. You were at that, you know, black people in Montgomery live in the same, you know, everybody mm-hmm. lived there. We mm-hmm. didn't go out because, of course, that was where the, you know, the white people had that neighborhood. So we stayed there, everybody. So uh, I, in turn, during the summer and during the school, in order to make, you know, extra money, I uh, picked cotton, I picked peanuts. And I always uh, wanted to see if I can help out with the band uh, for uh, Clowns. Mm-hmm. So while I was growing up, I got a chance to see, because they used to go around the Chitlin Circus. The, sick, the Chitlin Circus, if for all you uh, highfalutin people don't know what that is, that mm-hmm. is when these are little hole-in-the-wall dives, if you want to <laughs> call it, where they serve Chitlins. Okay. They'll serve chitlins. That's why the people listen to the music and drinking beer. Because chitlins <laughs> is a big thing. So you couldn't go in them places. If they, one lady was walking there, y'all serve chitlins, and no, she'd turn around and go back. People <laughs> like it was like that. It's like that. So it became the name Chitlin Circuit. So, so right. Mississippi. I always wondered about that name. Yeah, that's okay. how that name comes. Right. Uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. Uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. So all of it was uh, from that. So the musicians are travel from one club to another. Mm-hmm. So I got a chance to meet a lot of people that growing up with Wilson Pickett, hmm. uh, uh, Slim Harpo, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of him, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, yeah. Little, uh, 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 can't think of his name now, but John Lee Hooker, mm-hmm. uh, Muddy Waters, okay. uh, uh, Sonny Boy Williams, mm-hmm. Baby, mm-hmm. you know, he used to okay. sign out something like that. And then, wah, wah, you know, he used to make that. <laughs> My <laughs> mind. Say, and, um, and Blues Boy. And let me tell you oh, who Blues yeah. Boy is. Blues Boy, when he was a teenager, he used to stand on the corner and play blues. And the white people used to walk by and say, you know, that, that, that boy, because at them t- during them times, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, I'm not saying I was that, you know, I was there doing it, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying that's how he got his name. White people used to call black men, I don't care how old you was, right, boys. Right, you know right, what I mean? Okay. Right. So they used to like that boy or that man standing on the corner playing his uh, guitar. So they named him Blues Boy. 
And when he got up to to recognition, uh, he took that, but he did not call himself Blues Boy. He took the initials and he said BB. So just for all you people out there that don't know, BB stands for Blues Boy. So that's how BB King got his name. Wow, y'all hear that? <laughs> didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you didn't know so, that. So so BB actually, you know, <laughs> he in turn shot up with a lot of the others, but BB Blues was he used to have a thing, and just to let you know, uh, he named his, his guitar Lucille. Mm -hmm. And there's a story behind that. I would tell you, but I don't want the FCC to get on you. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we let, we let that alone. Right. I don't feel like that either. <laughs> so, uh, so doing that, and so I grew up around that. And so, you know, when you were a kid and you hearing all these blues, when you grow up, it stick with you. So I don't say, you know, so what I'm saying now, so it, I really do believe that when a kid is around something, their parents or wherever they in the surrounding, they're going to grow up and that's going to have some effect on them. So I mm -hmm. really do believe that. So if you curse around your kids when they're young, when mm -hmm. they grow up, they're going to accept, you know, they're mm -hmm. going to do that too. So I like the blues. And so I'm driving down nowhere in my car and I'm playing and I like, uh, you know, Howlin' Wolf and Jimmy Reed. Is two of my favorites. And Smokestack Lightning, Lil <laughs> Wayne, Drake, they ain't got nothing on that boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm playing Smokestack Lightning, and I was driving up over here near uh, El Segundo in Stanford. And I pulled in, and this guy was doing his yard. I pulled in on the side, and I had Smokestack Lightning. Mm -hmm. he, he heard it. He put his uh, blower or whatever he had cleaned his yard down, and he came up to the car. He said, is that the right song? I said, yeah. So he said, you ain't heard that song in over 40 years. Say, I'm from Louisiana. Can you play that one more time? <laughs> Which I did. And uh, I enjoyed it just like him. So I, in turn, uh, you know, just love the blues. And you also got to remember, Leon, the blues, these guitar players, B.B. King, uh, all of these, uh, Muddy Waters, uh, John Lee Hooker, all of these guys, <clears throat> have uh, generated when they were playing and their music actually have influenced a lot of these younger guys or these bands that we got now. Mick Jagger mm -hmm. called my uncle and Mick Jagger have used to go down and see these uh, blue scenes because he loved the way that mm -hmm. Keith Richards, who was guitar player from that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, mm -hmm. Used to, cause you know, them guys used to make that guitar talk. I mean, you can almost hear it. Ding, ring, 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 ring. You just wonder how. And the worst, the best place in the world is about Howlin' Wolf. Now, let me tell you how Howlin' Wolf got his name. And just to let you know, when Howlin' Wolf was a young man, just to let you know what he used to do. He used to go out, and he used to basically had uh, women. I guess you can say uh, he had a girlfriend. And his girlfriend, that she lived way in the country, and when he used to do, uh, her mom and her dad wouldn't let her go out with him or whatever. So what he used to do, he used to get out in the wood and try to howl like a wolf, because you know back in the country, you know what you got, you seen on TV where they said these guys, you know, Indians try to go like woo 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 woo, just like that. So he used to make sounds like that. That was the signal for her to come out. Wow. <clears throat> and let me, so. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you think if I start howling, somebody come out? <laughs> and so, and so that's how he got Howling Wolf, and that actually stuck in that Howling Wolf, you know. And so basically, that uh, that's how he got the name. But, you know, but I've realized a lot of these guys don't pass away, but the worst thing that don't happen to them, they did not own the rights of their song. Yeah, well, yeah, right. That was that was a precursor back then, though. Mm -hmm. Cause you know about the story about Cadillac Records, mm -hmm. uh, the Chess Brothers, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and anytime you hear because they were playing shit, Razor Blades were Gillette was playing Smokestack Lightning during the Super Bowl one when, and I'm like, wanna do his, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, his his people didn't get a dime with that because he didn't have the rights of that right song, then. you know. And this and, that. and just to let you know, uh, Howlin' Wolf's first name is Chester. Okay. That's his yes. first name. And he's from Chicago. Yeah. yeah. But, of course, you know that Chicago basically influenced the most of them and, guys that came around. And also, he was on dialysis. Oh, well, oh yeah, he was. He mm -hmm. was. Because he made a song that I liked, 
and I played it to a cousin of mine, say, uh, 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 somebody please call my mom. Right, right. right Tell right. her I'm doing it because his mama, she never accepted him because never she said did. that that was music never from did. the devil. That was music. And she said, I don't want to see my son or ever hear from him because he's singing and playing devil music. When he was on that, on this sick bed and he sung that song, which is one of his last, he, he says in that song, if you listen, I had a good life. I had lots of money and man that I have lots of women. He said in the song, I have lived a good life. And, and, and so what he's doing, he's letting everybody know that his life was all right, that no matter what the faith God got him, because he was slipping away, I, I, I had and The it. name of that song was Going Down Slow. Yeah, Going Down Slow. That's what he was. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't have you look it up, David. I'm ready to be ready. I'm going to tell you to look that up. Yeah. And so I, in turn, uh, like I said, uh, uh, love the blues because without that, a lot of R.B. singers and a lot of these uh, rap guys, they wouldn't be here today, you know, because that blues yeah, yeah. is right. exactly what it is. And, yeah. the, you know, and the blues originated in the, in, in the Delta anyway because right. the people out there, when they was picking cotton, Oh, That's what the word means, blues. I got the blues. You know, I got to go out there and hop sun and do this and do that. And that's how that word started, the blues. Hey, what's wrong with you? Well, I got the blues because I got to go out there and hear the lick at you. Well, don't you make can a see it in your face, too. You know? Exactly, exactly. You know, I had the blues today trying to get here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it tells you a story about your wife. I mean, about your life. <laughs> about, uh, you know, about your life. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, on, about your wife. You know, it's it just like country music. Country music. It's telling a story. It's telling a story. Uh, 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 same thing. You know, I mean, drinking. I'll tell you smoking. somebody that was a, was a genius that was Ray, because he could yeah. do one, and then he got in that country, and he was, yeah. he, he was number one on both. Right. Because, he, like he said, right. it's all telling a story. Yeah. That's all it is. It's Telling a life story. And putting it in, putting it in a way where you sing it and you used to it. But you know who's doing that today? The rappers. They telling their life story. Telling the story. Yeah, so right. You see what I'm saying? You see how... But it's just done this, in another format. Exactly. They started way back during the blues days, and these rappers telling stories. Because, you know, Tupac made his career on that, telling his life story. Sure he did. <laughs> and he was good at it, too. Yeah, yeah. His point. Okay, we're going we're gonna to stop right here, because I don't want you to give it all up. But what I want to do, what the men in here going to do right now, we're going to howl. Okay, see, we, we can howl, howl, and whoop. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with you, David. Let me see you hear you howl. Oh! <laughs> All right. Oh! All right. Ow, 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 ow! 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 We'll be right back. Ow! <laughs> Sick ow, 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 ow. <laughs> They can hear that music. Hey, here we yeah, are. Yeah, We're back. Okay, hold it, hold up, hold up. Uh, let me, engine, Mr. Engineer. 
I done told you before, this is the Leon Watkins show. You don't come in all that. But if I want to be, ended. that don't mean nothing. I mean, like, you said oh you, you doing that trying to tell people to clap or something. <laughs> They're not going to do that. I, this is my show. Okay, everybody, all the, let's all clap, y'all, right now. Come on back. Come on, everybody. So you can't. That's the way that go. Okay, you can't just do that. Now, did, we, did you hear us howling and going on? It's a, a lot of, there's a lot of men up in here. We better right? check outside and maybe some women out there, too, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. We ain't going to. So you come in here and you're bad influence right, on, on us. Now, I want Ron to talk about his famous uncle. Tell us a little bit about him because. I, you know, when I used to hear that song, and he, he's blind, wasn't he? Yeah, in a bit, but he's still, uh, you know, wearing the, the glasses because he's not totally blind. Oh, so you just put that down the... Yeah, but he can't drive and do all that kind yeah, of he stuff. He's blind. Okay, yeah. let's, let's, let's hear some more about him. Okay, uh, just to let you know that most of the songs, since I just, you know, uh, uh, since he's always on the road, so I only know just so much when I was actually there. So most of the stuff, like the songs that he come up with, they are uh, songs about life, like the one of the songs, Patches. Mm. Patches tell you about the story in Alabama, about his boyhood, and he's coming up, you know, he's giving you the story about what he used to do, okay. uh, basically from that. And then uh, during that song, the reason why they called him Patches because uh, the, the codes and clothes, you know, people in the country, you know, we didn't throw none away. <laughs> I used to look at my brother, and I, because my mother used to always say, I am know I was going to get my big brother's shirt and pants, because we call them hand me down. Mm-hmm. So I used to tell him, don't be doing them clothes too bad, because I knew they were coming to me. <laughs> and so mainly what it is is that, that patches is, uh, was a name because of the patches that you put on your clothes and stuff like that. So people were, that's the dirt poor, and uh, we didn't have, just like him, People uh, didn't wear shoes. Right? I know every night I used to have to that red mud. We got red red mud down there. You you probably know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Red mud. Mm-hmm. You don't see it out here, but that red mud get in between it, and and, and we used to go in places and, and, and it's some dirt that you can eat. You ever eat dirt clay? It, it is just clay that you can eat. You know what I'm talking about. So just going back there and catch, and so mainly the stories and the songs were just basically about about life in general. Now a lot of other things that come about is that uh, he was giving a lot of stuff. Can you sing this? Can you sing that? Because sometimes the record company were presented with something, but if he didn't see fit for him to do that, he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, wouldn't do it unless they offered him a, you know, a certain thing, but still he didn't have a lot of the rights. So like stroking. Now when he came out with stroking, uh, his wife left him real soon, a little later than that, after that song, because when they used to play stroking in these, uh, we used to call them uh, in the red light, it just, it, we called them juke joints back mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. In uh, where where you got uh, the, 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 the owner was had fish grease, all of your place smell of fish grease because they was cooking fish back there, sawdust on the floor. Uh, people just come in and you, you had to get dressed. See, this is different from now. Back then when you had the club, you didn't have to get dressed to go. You just come in off of your field clothes, just coming in because you just come in and relax, hear a good song. And, and drink a little corn liquor and eat a fish sandwich or eat, get you some chitlins and collard greens and corn, hot water cornbread, okra, you know what I mean? mm. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, it is, and so Stroking was uh, the biggest selling uh, 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 song and they still playing Stroking today. I don't know. So right now, people identify Clowns Carter with Stroking. I know, I did. Yeah. And uh, I have had a lot of people uh, that say, you know, oh, yeah, stroking, stroking. And, you know, everyone that said that have been women. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's amazing. One lady said she bought that song for her husband. You know? Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to hold up right back here. Because uh, uh, this man is, is a legend, Clarence Carter. And we find out a lot of things about him, Dave. Before we go on, uh, man says something. I just want to ask you: Have you ever eaten dirt? No, I have never eaten dirt. Not purposely. Well, we're gonna find out you know, in your experience. Okay. 
Yeah. Mm, they're out here in the yard out here out there. The <laughs> he said thing. red dirt. Well, no, no, it's clay. It's, it's clay. clay. Yeah, it's, it's clay. clay dirt. Red dirt. dirt is just what, you know, it's uh, it's the soil that makes it, things no. that's in the soil that makes it red. It's all right, though, whatever color it is. We're going to find out out there. All right, that's it. <laughs> And so basically, uh, you know, so through the songs, and that's what is it, uh, through, mostly through life. So with all the songs, and he collaborated with a lot of, Wilson Pickett, mm -hmm. uh, he was offered the song, um, uh, Midnight Hour, and he turned that song down, and it went Ooh, to Wilson uncle? Pickett. Yes, it was. And it went to Wilson Pickett. Uh, Wilson Pickett, I think, got a gold record from it. You know, it was one of and, his biggest hits. Right, and I I heard it on uh, some Halloween thing about two weeks ago. You know, uh, you know from that, and so. Uh, well, we hear that all the time. Yeah, yeah. I was always. Playing. Yeah, you know, as to from that, and so it's a lot of things that's uh, you know through life, and then he started singing songs and getting songs about women, different women. There's one thing that's different without getting too personal, is that when you're on the road and a magician like that, it takes a toll on your family. Now, he married, the uh, last wife was Candace Staten. You know Candace Staten? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did. She made a big singing song called Young Blood or something like that. What is it? Young Hearts. Young Hearts. One Free. One Free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Candy, and she sings gospel now. I mm know, -hmm. I've seen it. Yeah, she sings mm -hmm. gospel now, divorced. Divorced, divorced. Uh, that lasted for, for a few years. She divorced. But the first thing that would happen is that what Uncle Clowns used to do is that without putting every business out, he just had a roving eye. Yeah. You know. What you know about that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know nothing about no roving eye. Like, so you asked me, was he blind? He must wasn't too blind. He ain't too blind. No. <laughs> Well, he was just like Ray, like, like Ray Charles. Was, yeah, yeah, that's a raisin. Well, well, he had a, a, whatever. Let's move yeah, on, man. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to all that. <laughs> so um, that's what, uh, so doing out throughout the career, so that's mainly what it is. So it's a lot of things going on now where uh, where a lot of the songs are played and different, because, you know, I see them on commercials sometimes, and then a lot of them are still played in, in a lot of uh, places. Because they got, you know, the House of Blues, when I saw the House of Blues, I thought that was like one of the old fashioned when I first come to California. I thought that was one of the old fashioned like chipping. Right, right. Well, that's what yeah, they, I think that's where they originally started right. that because mm -hmm. they got people House of Blues. You know, Little Wayne can play at the House of Blues. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, so right. I'm looking to go in there thinking I was gonna, you know, get the good blues. You know, and it comes up, you know, with different. Kind of, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. kind of stuff. So that's basically what it is. So, so just to let you know, and about myself is that uh, I uh, grew up. Uh, like I said, dirt poor, and uh, I in turn, uh, parents were deceased, got killed on a crop duster plane. Um, I was raised by uh, my grandmother, and my grandmother raised seven of us on a railroad time of check and a check that she got from running the elevator at a knock on department store. She put inside that we should study hard and try to get so I studied hard and even if come home if you didn't have no uh, homework she said make some up. You know what I mean? So I applied about six or seven colleges and I got into UCLA, University of Texas, El Paso, I got into Georgetown and I got into a temple. And I took UCLA because, you know, everybody wanted to come to California, Hollywood. So I called UCLA and I said, I got this ladder here. And then I said, we, I don't have any money. They said, oh, we're going to give you a scholarship. So they gave me a full scholarship <clears throat> to come to UCLA. My family was so proud that everybody got together and gave me, took up a donation. And I got a ticket and, uh, 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 to Greyhound Bus. They picked me up at, in downtown LA. UCLA sent the van and I uh, filled the ground bus station and took me over where I stayed in the dorms. My first week that I had traumatic, I couldn't function because I wasn't used to that setting. Mm -hmm. um, my roommate was a white guy and I know what's the shiny shoes or serve him or do what. You know what I mean? I'm serious. I'm serious. So that bothers me oh, because man. I wasn't used to that. You know what I'm saying? I hate you. you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm just hate telling you the truth. Know. You want to hear it. No, so I'm I telling you the right. truth. No, you know? no, no. Go ahead. You know? So, mean, so mainly it. what I did is that I studied and I had to cope. That person right now is my nicest, my best friend. But just to let you know, so I studied hard. And I was always, the, uh, my teachers used to tell my grandmother, I have a semi 
photographic memory. If I see something and read it twice, I won't forget it. So I have always been good in school. So I could take a test and I can zoom for it. So I excelled in, in UCLA. I was facilities commissioner. You can Google my name at UCLA during that time. I was here during the Olympics. I was at UCLA. Hmm. Uh, I also helped one of my best friends, which I still talk to today, and he's a good friend of mine, Reggie Miller, the basketball mm. player. <clears throat> Went to school with Reggie. Reggie okay. lived two doors from, mm -hmm. from the room that I mm -hmm. lived in. And also, upstairs from us, this guy used to wake us up with his toy motorcycle that he had hardly, and he was a mechanic with greases and his tore up cowboy boots and stuff like that, and that was Troy Aikman. Mm. So, I went to school with, with both of these, you know, with these mm -hmm. guys. I don't know Troy personally like I know mm -hmm. Reggie, you know, because I've seen, you know, Reggie being out there in the Riverside, and he's still from that time. So I, in turn, I tell you some personal stuff when we get off there. But anyway, so I excelled, and I determined at that point in time at UCLA, I got my bachelor's from UCLA, and I determined I wanted to go to law school. I wanted to be an attorney. So I went to law school, uh, Loyola Marymount, and I, in turn, at that point in time, uh, became an attorney. Did that for six years. Didn't like it. I went back to college and I got an MBA. And I was recruited by Wells Fargo Bank as a senior vice president at their branch on downtown Old Figueroa and Field, where I retired from that job in 2010. My Lord. <clears throat> and uh, somebody said, You're so young to retire. But the reason that I was retired, Leon, because God been good to me. And I remember mm -hmm. now from my story, you was father and I was born next, next to nothing. Mm -hmm. Grandmother's still alive, mm -hmm. but during the time when I got my first job, I, I'm a fiscal conservative. I saved my money mm -hmm. because I never had nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, when I got something, I said, I don't want this man or this woman to determine my life. You know how some people go on a mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. and if they close the mm -hmm. job down, they, oh, they freak out. So I said, when I make money, I don't care if the company closed down people, I'm gonna be, you know, best to me. So I saved and I did that and since I was business savvy, I bought a lot of real estate. So I have a four unit apartment building, I have several houses in Compton, you know, and I have a unit in uh, Marina Del Rey and I personally live in Pasadena. So I live off of my real estate. So Hmm. Paper wise, Union Bank, according to Union Bank, I'm worth about 1.7, you know, on paper. Uh, so I in turn got bored and wanted to come back into business, and I went to UCLA based placement office, and I had a lot of job offers, and I took Lincoln Heritage. I saw an ad that uh, Adam Hale, who is the, uh, one of the managers at uh, region manager at, uh, at Lincoln Heritage <coughs> Life Insurance Company, and I called him. I was interested in it. I wanted to get an insurance license, find out about the company. Great company. And so that's what I do now. I sell uh, uh, life insurance on Lincoln Heritage, which I mm -hmm. met you. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you this. I get more satisfaction out of this job than when I was working at the bank or when I was an attorney. You may think that's crazy. I'm not making the same amount of money, but you know I don't do this mm -hmm. for the money. I do it because I'm helping my people. In the areas that I got, Watts, Compton, mm -hmm. Long Beach, South Central LA, these are my people. Okay. And I, I want you to hold that thought right there. I want you to hold that thought. See, you sit up, we see people, and we always want to make judgments on them. See, whoever the thought, that what's coming out of your mouth, I never would have known none of that. I mean, but, you know, and uh, it was something that hit me when you were saying that, you know, when you were talking about that. What hit me, uh, boss, was that uh, the Lincoln Heritage, my man here, they can sponsor one of our, my show. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? Give him a, let's give him a hand here. <laughs> yeah, that man can sponsor. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, look at that. We're going to be, we partnered right now. Come on, let's do this blood brothers. Come on. <laughs> All right. We blood brothers. You ain't going to cut me. No, no, I ain't going to cut me. No, we, we just blood brothers. You want to get in on this, Brandon? You, you, you blood brother with us? You know, see, he got him all worked up. He worked up too. What about you, Dave? David? Oh, sure. We, after you eat that dirt, just, you, you got to be initiated. <laughs> anyway, I am, I am just, you know, listen to you, man. This is fantastic. Don't you think so? Yeah. I mean, say something. Say something, somebody. I mean, y'all yes. heard this. No, that's so, that's so I always say no, when no, people no, talk no, to no. me. You can't. Wait a minute, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't. 
Who show is this? No, they on walking show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to do something. I want to hear, hear a little bit about patches right now. Uh-huh. You had it all keyed up. You said right. Well, let's see this right quick. Uh-huh. This, 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 let me do this, <laughs> please. Okay. Can we ha- can we hear this? Five, four, three, two. No. Papa used to tease me about it, cause deep down inside he was hurt, cause he'd done all he could. My papa was a great old man, I can see him with a shovel in his hand, see, education he never had. He did wonders when the times got bad, the little money from the crops he raised, barely paid the bills we made. Oh, life had kicked him down to the ground, when he tried to get up, life would kick him back down. passed away and I became a man that day so I told mom I was gonna quit school but she said that was daddy's strictest rule so every morning before I went to school I fed the chickens and I chopped wood too sometimes I felt that I couldn't go on I wanted to leave just run away from home but I would remember what my daddy said with tears in his eyes on his dying bed he said Patches I'm dependent Washed all the crops away And at the age of 13 I thought I was carrying the weight of the whole world on my shoulders And you know mama knew what I was going through Cause every day I had to work the fields Cause that's the only way we got our meals See, I was the oldest of the family And everybody else depended on me Every night I heard my mama pray Lord, give him strength to make Patches. We got my, we got some young folks in here never heard of Patches before. You know, never heard of it. But I'm going to tell this story about this, this young lady's husband. I used to live on Hillcrest Boulevard. And we went down to Quiznos right down the road one day. And I was off into Howling Wolf at, at that time. And I would get in, I would blast it. So we was out there in the lot. And we pulled up, you know, and we blasting Howling Wolf, mm-hmm. you know. And people came around the car looking. I think they had a, a that black car you had, Brittany. The black SUV. Anyway, they were around there, and uh, they looked at Hollow. They like never. What is that? What is that? I mean, these were young people. Mm-hmm. What is this? What is that? And so her husband act like he was the blues man. <laughs> All of a sudden, he the blues. He's gonna try to explain the whole thing of blues. Mm-hmm. You know, and and because. He, he hadn't heard it either, but he, he you know, he wanted to be the one that, because it's something about the blues and the mm-hmm. same, that gets into your soul. The blues is right next to gospel. The only difference is sometimes it's not connected in that respect. The only thing I look at the blues is that God can handle anything. You mm-hmm. know, we just have to turn it over to him because the blues, we can sing about it, mm-hmm. but what do you do about it? 
when you got the blues, what good you do? Mm-hmm. You got the blues, you wake up. I got the blues and I don't know how to sing them. Uh-uh. Okay? I got the blues and I don't know what to do. Ow! Think about you, baby, because you don't know that. Oh, gonna, oh, okay, okay, I'm not auditioning. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> you know, maybe I am. I want you to hear that. <laughs> anyway, just in case, you know, you got me running. You got, you got me, me hiding. Mm-hmm. You know that, don't you? You, you got, got me run, hide, hide, run any way you want it, let it roll. See, no. y'all don't know nothing about that good music. <laughs> now, if I start doing the a jingle bucket, jingle bucket, jingle bucket, that is, y'all jump up and down then, see? And all you say was a jingle bucket, jingle bucket. Do the crazy leg. I don't know. I can't <laughs> <jump. laughs> Yeah, that is, that's right. That leg go limp. Now, uh, I want you to get back to, you were telling me off the air that you ate mashed potato sandwich? Yeah, uh, you know, we were, like I said, we were born dirt poor, and uh, we uh, had a four-room shotgun house. I don't mean a four-bedroom, four rooms in our house. And we had seven kids and my grandmother. And so we were the type of people where my sister, we used to put a sheet up uh, on one side of the room so that the girls can have privacy. Me and my brothers... We used to fight on the, who was going to get the bed that night because we didn't have but, you know, one bed. And <laughs> I used to sleep on the floor. We called them pallets, you know, mm-hmm, throw mm-hmm, a blanket on mm-hmm, the floor and you mm-hmm. sleep up, get up. And I used to get up every morning at 2.30, slop the halls and do it in the morning because the bus came by at 5 to go to school. So i get up and get all the farm stuff going and together, get the chores going. So I, we didn't have nothing much. But, you know, some, we, that house was full of love. But we, she made mashed potato uh, sandwiches where you get mashed potatoes that you put on your plate and you make with two pieces of bread. And, you put, and I took many sandwiches like that for lunch. Used to sit over in the corner by myself because kids, young kids are very cruel. Mm-hmm. And they see all of that. <laughs> and you didn't, I didn't want them to see it. And I used to eat mashed potato sandwiches. And, I was just, and, 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 and people go and you know, people, I hear people now, people say, what y'all had for dinner and, and breakfast? Our, in my house and in our house that time is what you got in that refrigerator. If it was dinner time and all you had was bacon and grits, that's what you had for dinner, bacon and grits. <laughs> you know? So you know something, Liam, but like I was telling you, though, I am not uh, uh, embarrassed of where I came from and my upbringing, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget it, where I came from. And I don't care why God mm-hmm. bless me. Uh, no matter what I get and what I got, I would never forget my folks. That's why I go home every holiday. I'm going back in three weeks for Thanksgiving to see everybody. We have one of these old facts things where we fry our turkeys. We don't bake them like people in mm-hmm. California do. But God had a plan, mm-hmm. and, you know, I was thinking that he had forgot us. You know, why would you take kids' parents away? But he had a plan, and so I put myself in, 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 in his hands, and he have guided me and navigated me throughout life. And right now, uh, he want me to give something back, and that's why I'm in the Big Brother. I do Big mm-hmm. Brother, mm-hmm. where I go to South Central and I talk to gang members. Mm-hmm. I have about seven people. I go to East L.A., and I have, and my best friend is a gang member from a gang called MS. He, I got him out of a gang. He got two kids. I was the best man at his wedding. He chose mm. me over his dad. Mm. And he's told me, he's now about 31. He said, I'll never forget what you did for me when I was in high school. He said, because of you, I'd probably be in jail or dead. Mm. Here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> you do like the old cereals. We're going to have to stop right here. Mm. Because you got to, uh, think you come back next week? I'll let you know. <laughs> well, who you got to check with? Uh, I have to look at my schedule need, more than like. You need to call somebody. <laughs> no, right, no, it's my, that, my that, boss that, call anybody. Uh, that's the that's the, well, my birthday is Monday. Oh, we gonna call him after that. We not and uh, I'm gonna <laughs> no, be I'm gonna be in <laughs> Vegas. I'm going to Vegas on Friday morning. I ain't got nothing to do with my show, brother. But I, I mean, I'm happy be, birthday. I may stay there for saying, two weeks. No, two weeks. <laughs> I'm fooling with you. No, no, I, I probably can. I probably can. Well, you know, you can let me know. I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Give, come on, let's give give it up. With Brother Carter, Ron Carter, ladies and gentlemen, he he really gave us a lesson. I mean, I'm very touched with it. Uh, maybe some of the young people can l- learn some things. What what you say, Brittany? Encouragement. Thank you. She used a big word, uh, David. <laughs> <laughs> big words again. I told y'all about that. But uh, I, I'm just so glad to have you here. Now we had uh, 
my boy Jesse Drummer last week. You know, we all gonna pull all this together. All this is gonna be coming together. How you doing, Jess? Talk to you later, Holmes. But uh, you know, you know, I, you know, I, I just want to say this to my sister. You know, just stay, stay strong. You and William, I got you on my mind. Phil Brooks is out here somewhere, William. I, he's supposed to be here. I don't know what happened to him. Kurt, I know you're listening. All right, I'm glad you're there and everything. Kurt is in Minnesota. My my sister and her husband is in Mississippi. You know, so we're going all, all over. Now I have to talk about my niece and her novel. You can order it. Uh, talk about that. We can. How can you get this thing? Uh, Amazon. Amazon.com.com. <laughs> dot com. We 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 were going. Uh, we got all the stuff you you sent. But she, see, she's doing engineering. She don't. She just don't know how to pull it up right now. So, but I, I, I want to just tell you that we're working on it. We're gonna have it done. But everybody should get that book. Tall, dark, and handsome. Southern. <laughs> I guess I was thinking about myself. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 hold up. Hold up. Tall, dark, and southern. All right. And she has some kind of other name. I can't think of that name she go by. What is it? Jalencia. Who? Jalencia. 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 That's my. That's that's T. My niece. That's what. That's what I all know. T. And she wrote this novel. And I think that you guys should get it because I want whoever about get the first one. I'm bringing on the air. We talk about it. Whoever reads it first, get a shot on this station on my show. Get the. Amazon.com. Go and tall, dark, and southern. Get it. All right. Everybody say all right. All right. You didn't say it, David. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, this has been a a, a, a wonderful experience for me. I call this being on on, on this, this show an experience. You know, we not we just don't listen and look to this show. It is an experience for me. What do you think about this? It's your first time. What do you think about it, Brandon? Man, say enjoying it. That's right. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you you getting them? See, this yeah. is the thing. We need to have a blues day or something. Day. We I have mean, some we, barbecue and, fish go, and, and go some with foot grease. Right. Bring mashed potato sandwich. All that. We can have that <laughs> set up. Whoever meets the most get a prize. <laughs> Man, say holy chitlins. Well, we get a sister like that. Hog, and don't hog malls. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going to deal with the malls now. I don't. But I was thinking about that. We'll talk to my boss about it, and we'll see what the deal is. Have you ever had any hog malls, David? No, I haven't. You got a I don't treat. even know what it is. You got dirt, hog malls, chitlins, mm -hmm. pig ears. Mashed potato sandwiches. Rabbit, and, I may and have had that. Chicken, that, that you ever had any familiar. chicken feet? Huh? Chicken feet? No. Well, we're going to have that. And chicken beaks. No. Okay. All right. What about and, oxtails? Oh, I love oxtails. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can have that right now. <laughs> Put some good gravy over mm -hmm. and all that rice. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Man. I've yeah, had yeah. buffalo. Does that count for anything? Buffalo? I've had buffalo. No, no, we don't recognize <laughs> that, man. We don't want nobody no buffalo. Anyway, this has been an exciting show for me. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in here today. And I hope that you love somebody. Remember, the people that is shut in or sick, y'all know people. Just don't sit and talk about them. Go see them. Call them. Talk to them. Tell them you love them because they're going through something that you would never, could never understand. Do that because one day, God forbid, you might be in that same situation. You never know about these things. What goes around come to me. Same people you meet going up, you meet going down. Amen? Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. God say the same. Have a lovely day. I don't care what your mother said. I don't care what your father said. I don't care what your friends say, but you know, I know, we're gonna get together one day, yeah, get together, baby, wow, well, baby, baby.
baby Gonna get together, baby One day, baby